Hey folks, thanks for stopping by and welcome back to my YouTube channel Czechoslovak Gun Stories. My name is Kuba and in today's episode we are going to discuss probably the most iconic weapon that was ever created in the former Czechoslovakia and that's CC-75. That's right, uh, a couple of months ago there was a book published on the history of the CC-75. I bought the book, I went through it, it's awesome, it provides a lot of details, a lot of information, pictures, so if you are Czech speaking, go ahead and buy this book, it's awesome, it, it will just tell you a lot more than you already know, or than you think that you already know about the CC-75. Anyway, uh, I've decided, uh, based on information found in this book and other resources I have, to create a sort of um, uh, a series on the history of the CC-75. Since there is a lot of information I would like to share with you, I've decided to split it into several several parts, just like uh, with the VZ-61 Scorpion, uh, the series I had made a couple of months ago, you can find it here. Anyway, so let's start with the CC-75. The former Czechoslovakia is known for a couple of iconic weapons that were designed here. Uh, one of them may be a ZB-26 uh, light machine gun, which was iconic in a way how high quality, easy to shoot and progressive weapon it was. Another example is the VZ-58 uh, assault rifle, which was iconic in a way that it was completely different internally uh, compared to other guns that were on the market uh, at the time. Another example would be the VZ-61 Scorpion, which was iconic in a way that it was the first gun uh, to the game. It was the first PDW. There was no other subcompact submachine gun uh, introduced in the service of any armed forces before. And yeah, so as you can tell, probably Czechoslovaks are always capable of creating some iconic, very progressive, high quality weapons. All the other weapons I just mentioned were slightly different to the CC-75 in a way that they were primarily uh, invented or designed for the military use, but not the CC-75. Uh, by the way, you probably never heard VZ-75, right? And that's because it was never formally adopted into the service of the Czechoslovak armed forces. CC-75 is gone of, let's say, a st strange history. You may be asking why the Czechoslovaks would um, develop a firearm that it was not meant to be uh, used by the armed forces in the first place. You have the, the CZ-24 and 27 pistols, also known as VZ-24-27. Uh, These were in a service with the pre-war Czechoslovak army. Then you have VZ-52, obviously the post-war design, VZ-38. All these guns were meant to be used by the Czechoslovak army, so they were designed for the use by the Czechoslovak armed forces. But not the CZ-75, and you may be asking why. Well, uh, it's it's actually pretty pretty simple. If you know how the communist economy works, uh, it doesn't work very well, obviously, and uh, it's actually uh, directed uh, by the government or by the communist party directly. They decide what's going to be uh, produced, when, where, in what numbers, etc. This system has many, many issues, many grave issues. One of them is that it creates a shortage of certain goods and product, products on the market. And that was the case of the communist Czechoslovakia as well. It was actually the problem of the whole Eastern Bloc. And what they actually needed was uh, the foreign currency, the Western currencies, dollars, uh, pound sterling, uh, West German marks, for them to be able to import the missing goods, the missing items uh, in the country from the Western countries, because obviously some of the some of the things that they were missing were not available within the Eastern Bloc. Um, that could be like electronics, some machining tools, heavy machinery of certain types, especially the more sophisticated ones, and many other things. And so, as I mentioned, they needed Western currencies. Uh, there were certain ways how to how to get the Western currencies. And one of the ways, the, the way that the Czechoslovakia probably um, preferred was to maximize its export. And the firearms were one of the most successful es uh, export article of the former Czechoslovakia. Uh, if you watched my previous video on the history of CZ-50 and CZ-70 pistols, you noticed that a uh, majority of the 645,000 of CZ-70 pistols were exported. They were a very successful um, export article, let's say, at the time, 
but in uh, the mid 1960s uh, the demand started to fall slightly and uh, well the Czechoslovak authorities realized okay well this gun was modern in the early 1950s but we are uh, halfway through the 1960s and it's not modern anymore we may need something something new something uh, modern because obviously the western countries were suffering from the outbreak of um, criminal activities or organized crime and especially terrorism right there was a thing in the late 1960s all the red army fractions and uh, red brigades ira islamist terrorism uh, all that struck the western europe unprepared the police and military forces were complaining that their weapons especially the handguns do not quite match the firepower that these uh, criminals and terrorists had and they were looking for a solution to this problem unfortunately they found out that there is actually no solution the guns that were on the market were not really really useful to resolve this crisis and the czechoslovaks realized that this is actually a gap in the market that they could fill in 1969 the leadership of česká zbrojovka decided to start uh, the research on the new weapon uh, chambered in 9mm Luger or at the time known as 9mm Parabellum that would actually fill this gap in the market and they requested uh, this design from the, probably the most talented or one of the most talented designers in the history of the Czechoslovak firearms František Kocky it is very interesting to say that František Kocky at that time was already on a pension since 1967 but he decided to work uh, in Česká zbrojovka despite that and he and his team were given the task to create a brand new pistol chambered in the 9mm that was called a defensive pistol. The requirements for the new pistols were very, very vague and so Franciszek Kocki had a lot of space for inspiration from different firearms and uh, from his own knowledge actually. The requirements were to create a new defensive 9mm parabellum pistol. That's it. So, uh, as you can tell, Franciszek Kocki started his work and the first prototype was a gun that was more like a very, very compact, slim 9mm pistol, single action only with single stack magazine. That was something that was already to be found on the market, let's say. So, the, the, the process progressed, they were designing uh, and polishing the design uh, more and more. And we can have a look at uh, one of the first um, designs that we have a picture of. And you can already see the contours of the CC75 on the prototype. Even though it still has a single action only trigger, it has a single stack magazine, and the ejection port is located on top instead of uh, in the right side as it is in, with the ordinary CC75. Anyway, the design seemed to be going the right direction, and over time, the authorities came up with an idea that it would be nice probably to introduce a double stack uh, high capacity magazine to the concept so that it sort of gained some advantage over the other designs uh, that were uh, that were uh, available on the market uh, at the time. And so František Kocky used double stack, double feed magazine first, because there was uh, no available uh, double stack single feed magazine uh, in the former Czechoslovakia. Uh, this solution had some advantages and some disadvantages. The most, most important advantage was that it was very easy to load and also the capacity was higher than with a single single feet uh, double stack magazine it was 16 round magazine however the problem was that uh, with such solution you need to make sure that the gun is able to fit from both sides from left and right and also it's quite complicated to make the gun as slim as it can be uh, because once again you have the magazine which is wide on top so in the end uh, Franky Shekotsky decided to use the double, double stack single feed magazine instead, even though the capacity uh, decreased from 16 to 15 rounds. An interesting information is that Česká zbrojovka realized that the gun should not be just a tool, but it should be also nice to look at. So for the first time in the history, they hired an external industrial designer uh, who cooperated on the design of the CC75 and obviously he did a really, really good job. Once this prototype was uh, completed, 
the designing team started some testings and they revealed two facts. Fact number one was that the gun was completely reliable and there was no problem with feeding or extracting etc. The, the fact number two was actually a problem and there was a problem with accuracy. Yeah, you're right. We are really not used to have problems with accuracy with CZ-75s. Uh, actually, they are very well known for their accuracy. So you may be wondering what happened. What I found out was the problem with this can track, this, this, this kidney shaped can track. They needed to adjust it so that the fit of the barrel to slide and frame improved. Once they did that, the accuracy significantly improved. However, it also brought about another problem, and that was a problem with slide, slide stop slide release, which on CC75 is also acting as a cam that leads the barrel. Uh, in, the, in the firearm and well uh, the problem was that the lifespan of these pins decreased uh, to less than 5000 rounds they were prone to crack and some of the users of the CZ75 especially the older CZ75 know about it because they had this same problem that their uh, camping cracked uh, after some couple of thousand of rounds maybe uh, I didn't have that problem I have to say uh, even though when I uh, bought my CC75 Tactical Sport, I got three of these from the factory, so that's probably because uh, this gun was expected to uh, take tens of thousands of rounds, and if there was some problem with the camping during a competition or whatnot, uh, you wanted to have replacements. However, uh, this problem over the years was resolved, and I'm sure that uh, all Modern CZ-75s do not have that problem at all or very, very rarely. So by addressing all the issues, the CZ-75 was ready for serial production. So let's leave the history right here and focus on uh, another uh, discussion that is very common regarding CZ-75. And that was the inspiration. Now, so let's discuss what inspired uh, František Kotsky and his team when they were working on the CZ-75. Well. Uh, many people say it was uh, the Browning High Power. Now, let me let me correct you on that. Browning High Power was not the primary um, inspiration uh, for Francis Kotsky, we can say, even though I believe the concept, high capacity magazine, uh, steel frame, uh, duty pistol, that was obviously a thing that they wanted to achieve, but there's a lot of changes to the, to the basic concept of running high power, that saying that the high power was a primary inspiration from Francis Kotsky is not all that correct. Uh, there was another firearm that is often referred to as uh, being a, uh, an inspiration for Francis Kotsky and for the CZ-75 uh, as such, and that's, um, that's a SIG P210. Uh, well, obviously CZ-75 is known for its inverted slide rails, when the, uh, when the slide travels inside the firearm. And you'd be right, um, this is something that was on a SIG P210 and that probably inspired Franciszek Kotski. Uh, however, SIG P210 was not the first weapon that introduced uh, these inverted slide rails, but it was rather the French uh, 1935A pistol, which, however, was the brainchild of the same designer as SIG P210, and that was uh, Charles Gabriel Peter, the Swiss uh, firearms designer, who was very, very talented, just like Francis Kotsky, and uh, for that reason, SIG P210 is one of the best, uh, actually it's my top five, one of the top five uh, 9mm pistols of all time, uh, at least in terms of accuracy, the grip, and the beauty to look at. Right, it's it's just awesome pistol. So, yeah, we can say that uh, Sig P210 was actually an inspiration in terms of the inverted slide rails. But you, what you may not know is that it was also the uh, the, the locking system which uh, Franciszek Kotski once again took from the Sig P210. So it was not Browning high power because C75 is not using a direct uh, Browning type uh, tilting barrel system but it using what's called browning Petter system which once again is named after charles gabriel Petter. 
if you have a look at the kidney shaped uh, can track of the CZ75 which actually leads the barrel when it drops and goes back into battery you can spot it is uh, much more similar to SIG P210 to the Browning High Power so once again the inspiration was uh, taken rather from SIG P210 than uh, the Browning High Power what was taken from the Browning High Power however is the magazine the, uh, the double stack single feed magazine which was however improved in Česká zbrovka so it uh, took uh, 15 instead of 13 rounds so that's what was actually inspired from the Browning High Power uh, however uh, a lot of parts on the CZ75 were an original design of František Kocki mainly the trigger uh, unfortunately <laughs> this is just a single action trigger so I can't show you uh, I can't show you the uh, the double action pull, but in single action you have a very light and crisp trigger on the CZ75 and in case of the double action trigger it's very smooth, rather light and yet it is very safe and that was done by a very very original solution to the trigger bar. If you are wondering what exactly was the magic happening inside this gun have a look at my previous video on the CZ75 trigger where I explained uh, all the details uh, why the CZ75s especially in double action are so different to all the contemporaries that were available on the market at that time. Another thing uh, the CZ75 was uh, valued for was the fact that it was at that time um, equally heavy to all the other Wonder 9s however it was using steel frame many of its contemporaries were using alloy frame to achieve uh, the weight around one kilogram and I think uh, C75 is very popular for and uh, very valued for is the grip itself it fits very well in the hand because a lot of focus was put on uh, the ergonomics of the CZ75. It was actually that good at the time that Jeff Cooper himself, the pistol shooting guru, actually said that the CZ75 is the very first pistol that uh, uses a large, large capacity magazine. Uh, it's the first of the Wonder Nights that really does the job that it fits like 80% of hands. People with small, medium and large hands they could just grip the C75 fine, operate it. Also, the, he, he liked the, um, the th thumb safety, uh, which actually is easy to uh, use with your thumb. And I also, when shooting, I use it as a, as a sort of a thumb rest on my C75. So is the slide stop slide release. It's very easy to, to achieve and use. The mag release is very easily accessible. It's also reversible on the CZ75. So all those features, along with a good trigger and very soft recoil, meant that the CZ75 uh, became very popular, especially among the sport shooters at the time. Unfortunately, there were also problems with the production of the CZ75 because compared to what was already in produce at the time in Česká zbrovka, pieces like VZ70, for example, these guns were rather simple, uh, in always and uh, they didn't need all that much machining compared to CZ75 a lot of bench sheet metal elements were used in the gun uh, where the CZ75 required some more hand fitting etc so the production numbers of the first years were not as high as they could be that was a problem because uh, as I mentioned uh, at the very beginning this gun was meant to be an export article and if you design something for export and then you are not able to make the gun in large numbers and sell it to everybody who's interested and there was a lot of interests from uh, from all countries across the world then it kinda doesn't make sense what also didn't make sense was the patenting system in the Czechoslovakia uh, and now you may be wondering patents? did he say patents? the CZ75 was copied all across the world so what patents are you talking about? Well, guess what? František Kocki uh, patented four different things on the C75 and especially the trigger was a very important uh, patent. However, uh, to his sadness, actually, these patents were stamped as a uh, secret, right? That, that was a problem in the former Czechoslovakia. The problem was that even though this was not meant to be a military weapon, uh, it was potentially usable for the army 
Despite the fact that uh, the standard cartridge in the Eastern Bloc was 9mm Makarov at the time, but still, this was a weapon and therefore uh, it could have been used in the Czechoslovak army in some situation, maybe. So, uh, somebody stamped the, uh, the, the patents as uh, confidential, secret, therefore the patents existed on the farm, but nobody was able to find them and uh, so therefore it looked like this gun went out completely unprotected. It was, but no one knew and well there was a shame for uh, the Czechoslovakia because their potentially very successful uh, exporting article was copied all across the world including uh, by Jeff Cooper himself. We know that František Kotsky was very sad about the fact that the CZ-75 was copied all across the world. It was his brainchild after all and uh, well we can say that if he was born and if he worked outside uh, the Eastern Bloc in some of the democratic uh, Western countries or anywhere else, um, he would be a very rich man because this gun was, uh, if it was uh, sold commercially properly and if it was um, protected by uh, the patents correctly, it would be just a very, very successful article uh, for both commercial and um, law enforcement military sales all across the world. But unfortunately, since the situation was what it was, uh, instead other companies profited from copying uh, the engineer's design. So guys, that's it for the first part on the CZ-75. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, use the comment section should you have some questions, remarks, whatever you would like to discuss with me. It helps me with algorithms, therefore you are actually supporting the channel by that. Also, uh, if you have a chance and you speak Czech, buy the book from David Pazdera about the CC75. It's awesome, completely awesome, just like the CC75 itself. So, stick around and get ready for the next part where we discuss more about the CZ-75's improvements over time. We'll discuss the variants of the CZ-75 and many more information that you may not know about the firearm right now. So, thank you and until next time.